Stuka Joe here and welcome to this preview video of the great game. This is a strategic card driven game of the struggle between the British Empire and the Russian Empire during the 19th century to gain control and influence in Central Asia. This is a game of low to medium complexity and solitaire suitability is also low to medium since it's a card driven game. Let's take a look at the game's components. The game includes a 22 by 34 inch paper map showing parts of Russia, British India, and Central Asia. That includes Persia, Afghanistan, and other areas. In this game, uh, there are several home countries in addition to the imperial powers, which are Great Britain and Russia. Uh, the rest of the countries are what is called in the game vassal states. And each vassal state in the game, like Afghanistan, is color-coded. And in the game, there's two types of spaces, round or unfortified spaces, and fortresses, which are star-shaped. Fortresses have a strength rating, like we see here for Erat which has a strength of 15, and that strength can be diminished by uh, opposing forces attacking the fortress and causing damage to the fortress, which is marked with these damage markers. And finally, when the total of damage markers equals the fortress's uh, strength, we place this marker to indicate that the fortress has been destroyed, and now it is treated as a regular non-fortified space. The map also includes several spaces for the players to place the card that they play during a round, like uh, the space that we see there, British current card. And also players can play cards during the opposing player's round, and that would signify the play of a reaction card. So there's also a space to play uh, reaction cards. And then we have the Ascent to High Asia panel. Each of the sides has one such panel. And that shows two cards that need to be played by that side in order for the side to be able to enter uh, into Kashgaria, which is uh, this vassal state represented by this uh, uh, bluish-green color. Without having played those cards, uh, a side cannot have its units enter any of these spaces. The map also has a turn record track. Each turn represents a decade starting in 1830. And each turn is comprised of five rounds and there's also a track to keep track of those five rounds. And there's also a place where to place cards that have a lasting effect over the entire round. The game also includes 123 fourths of an inch counters, like the ones shown here. At top, from left to right, we have British officers, Russian officers. Then these uh, troops in yellow are Afghan strength points, and there can be a maximum of 10 Afghan strength points on the board at any time. And here we see, of course, uh, the British strength points in red. Here we see the Russian strength points in black and in purple the Persian strength points. Persia is a vassal state that also has a standing army and uh, its strength can never be more than 20 strength points. And finally we see here the uh, Afghan leaders Akbar and Ayub. There is also 176 0.6 of an inch counters, and these are mostly markers uh, like these uh, fortress damage markers and these rebel markers. There's instances in a game when uh, a player can play a rebellion card and a vassal state erupts in rebellion and uh, these rebel strength points are placed on the map depending on a specific die roll. And, uh, here we see British and Russian control markers and discontent markers. When an imperial power conquers a vassal state, 
it gains control of the vassal states spaces and you place the control markers of the imperial power but you also have to place these discontent markers as a reminder of how uh, control um, was gained here that was actually by conquering the vassal state and that's going to be uh, a state that may erupt in rebellion later and finally we have here the fortress destroyed markers and yeah this is a card driven game so the game includes a deck of 54 cards and here we have the cards there's two types of cards in the game cards that have a blue background in their title these are action cards they can be played for action that means for the cards value in this case three and the player could for example move uh, three stacks one space or move one stack three spaces or move one stack two spaces and two other stacks one space and in addition the player can conduct the actions that are stated in the text and the player has the option of uh, doing them uh, the other way around that is conducting the action in the text first and then uh, conducting uh, moves with the card's value. Now there's also these cards with a yellow background in uh, their title. These are reaction cards. They can be played for the card's value. They could be played, for example, this card could be played to move units and also to bring reinforcements as any other action card, but it can also be played as a reaction card and that is during the opposing player's round and that is what is stated here in the red text. All cards in this game also have an indicator in the bottom right corner of the card that tells you how many of these type of cards that are present in the game. So there's only one Emir's Daughter card but there is four, there are four Rebellion cards and for example three Informant cards and six Emissary cards. The game comes with a 16-page rule book. It is uh, in full color and matte, and uh, it is illustrated with uh, many pictures in color. The actual rules for this game reach page number nine. And on page number nine, there we start with the scenarios. The first two scenarios are solitaire scenarios. The first Afghan war is a solitaire scenario where the player takes control of the British forces. The second scenario is also a solitaire scenario and the player controls the Russian forces. The victory conditions for those two scenarios are specified in each one of them and it uh, is basically the taking of several identified spaces on the map. The third scenario is, of course, the campaign game, the great game, and it lasts all six turns. Each turn, as we stated before, is, uh, comprises a decade and consists of five rounds. And the victory conditions of the campaign game are pretty straightforward. The side that has more spaces at the end of the game wins, but neither side gets credit for any spaces in Persia. On page 11 of the rulebook, there is a comprehensive example of play where it is described uh, uh, that uh, three rounds are played there, and we will actually play those three rounds here to end this video. And then in pages 13 and 14, we have a description of the history behind each one of the cards in the game. And that goes up to page 15. And finally, the back of the book, page 16, doubles as a player aid card. You have there what the numbers and symbols on the counters and cards mean. And in the bottom, we have a summary for combat resolution and a table. Uh, but you will see that combat resolution and that table is easily committed to memory. So we will be moving the counters over the map following the comprehensive example of play found in the rulebook and we'll start right now. 
Before we start, let's take a look at the initial forces on the map. The British begin with 12 strength points of uh, soldiers in Delhi, in the British Raj. And there's two leaders there, two officers, Pottinger with a tactics rating of three, which is the number to the left, and a diplomacy value of one. The tactics rating, of course, is used in combat, and the diplomacy value is used uh, with the uh, play of the emissary card. Burns has a tactics value of one and a diplomacy rating of two. The Russians, on the other hand, begin the game with eight strength points at Orenburg, which is a fortress with a strength of five. Notice that the Russians uh, don't have it so easy at the beginning because in order to move to any other space, they have to cross through desert terrain. You see they're even moving within Russia, Russia to Gudiev. They have to go and pass through the desert. If they move south to uh, the kingdom of the Turkomans also, if they move east to the Kazakhs, the same thing. So the Russians have this disadvantage at the beginning of the game. And at Tehran, Persia, the game begins with one British officer there, Stodar, and two Russian officers, Simonich and Vitkievich. And in this game, opposing leaders or officers can coexist in the same space, but not strength points. So we placed a decade marker in the 1830 space and the round marker in the round number one space. So this is where we will end this preview video. To see how the game plays, check out the mechanics at play video where we will play three full rounds of the game. So this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.